Hey guys, what's going on? It's Eli, back with another review video. And yes, you read the title. And as I teased in the last review video, in fact, you know, I pretty much gave it away. That's right, I'm reviewing DreamWorks Kung Fu Panda. Yes, and of course, the first Kung Fu Panda film. Boy, I tell ya, what a great piece of animation that DreamWorks brought to us. Like, you know, obviously, when this uh, first came out, in fact, you know, when the trailers came out, and I remember, because, you know, seeing the trailers and, you know, when the film was coming out, I was only, I was only seven, you know, when this film came out. And, yeah, because I'm pretty sure that at first people... We're not sure what to make up on this uh, new upcoming DreamWorks animated feature. I mean, you know, first off, the title. Like, that's just a strange title. You know, a, a Kung Fu Panda? And the fact that Jack Black was voicing a panda? Like, y yeah, because it was just so mind-blowing. And probably, yeah, because some people thought that this was probably going to be stupid. But sure enough, I mean, okay, first, what actually, because... I'm pretty sure as though, because, yeah, in the trailers, the animation itself looked beautiful and stunning. And sure enough, when the film finally came out, everybody, like, they couldn't, could, they couldn't, they, nobody could have expected how good this would turn out to be. It's, it's beautiful. The storytelling was really good. It had some really great funny moments to it. And especially some pretty good emotional stuff going on. Oh my gosh, like... The, the Kung Fu Panda franchise, you know, the entirety of it, it doesn't disappoint with the emotions that it brings us. And, you know, making some people cry, which, yeah, it's, it's true, so. All right. So, as always, I'll go ahead and read the description slash the story. Poe might just be the laziest, clumsiest panda in the Valley of Peace, but he secretly dreams of becoming a kung fu legend. When the villainous snow leopard, Tai Lung, threatens Poe's homeland, the, ha um, the helpless panda is chosen to fulfill an ancient prophecy and defend the valley from attack. Training under Master Shifu, Poe embarks on an epic high-kicking adventure as he, star as he sets out to thwart Tai Long's evil plans. So again, Jack Black voicing Poe, who's a panda. And uh, Kung Fu Panda was not Jack Black's first DreamWorks animated feature. He previously did the voice of Lenny the Shark in Shark Tale. Yeah. And, um, yeah, because the opening to the film, like, it starts off with, like, 2D animation, although it actually wasn't done, you know, by hand-drawn, you know? It was actually done with computer, like, a very clever way to make it still look like it's, you know, 2D. I mean, even as of now, because, like, like, with some uh, 2D animated shows on TV, they're still done with computer, so yeah. Uh, basically, like, yeah, Jack Black, again, voicing Poe, like, uh, it starts off with, like, uh, a little bit of a 2D animation going on, and we see the Dragon Warrior, which being a panda, and of course being Poe, and, you know, obviously Poe is narrating Jack Black, and um, the Dragon Warrior taking on the bad guys, and then we see the Furious Five tagging along with the Dragon Warrior, and of course, it turns out that it was just a dream, as some of the Dragon Warrior members, you know, saying, you know, Poe, get up, you'll be late for work! And thus, yeah, Poe wakes up from the dream he had of being a kung fu fighter and, you know, being the Dragon Warrior. And Poe lives in a noodle shop uh, that's run by his dad, who you think uh, it's a panda, but no, it's, um, it's a bird, uh, like a, a goose, I want to say. Yeah. And uh, Poe's father, Mr. Ping, yeah, I, I think I got the name right, voiced by legendary actor James Hong. I tell you, because James Hong, just such an iconic actor, and he's been in so much. Like, literally, as of today! So, if you think about it. 
And, uh, yeah, Poe tells his father that he was dreaming, and, you know, his father, you know, asks him, what were you dreaming about? And he, 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 uh, he lies to him and tells him that he was dreaming of noodles. And that makes his father so happy because, you know, it's because it's in his adoptive son's blood now, like, running the noodle shop business, you know, in the family and so on. Um, but of course, secretly Poe, you know, I'm sure that for Poe, he loves noodles and doing it and so on, but he really loves Kung Fu. And then sure enough, we get the introduction of Master Shifu and the Furious Five. Master Shifu being voiced by legendary actor, another legendary actor, I should say, Dustin Hoffman. And we have the Furious Five, the five members of, well, the Furious Five. Tigress, voiced by Angelina Jolie. Monkey, being voiced by Jackie Chan. Uh, Mantis, being voiced by Seth Rogen. Uh, Viper, a snake, yeah, being voiced by Lucy Liu. Crane, being voiced by David Cross. And, yeah, so there's, yeah, we get the introduction of Shifu and the Furious Five. And then, sure enough, um... I think, yeah, because it's uh, Zeng, yeah, another goose, uh, who shows up and informs Shifu that uh, Master Ugwe, uh, you know, wants to see him because something is wrong. And Zeng, uh, being voiced by Dan, Dan Fogler, yeah, I think I got uh, his name right. And Dan Fogler, because he would go on uh, to uh, be in um, the Fantastic Beasts films. And he was also in that uh, movie called uh, Fanboys, if anybody remembers that film. Um, and, uh, yeah, so then we get the introduction of Master Ugwe, who is a turtle, who is, you know, a very old and wise turtle, you know, who's a, you know, a true master at Kung Fu and so on. And Master Ugwe being voiced by Randall uh, Duke Kim, I think. I think I got that right. Yeah, especially the middle name. And Ugwe tells Master Shifu that Tai Long will return. And, you know, Shifu is going on saying, but that's impossible. And, you know, he orders Zhang to, you know, go to um, the prison, like the prison location, the, the, lo the, the, the prison location yeah, where uh, Tai Long is called the Chorgam Prison. I think, yeah, I'm saying that right. And uh, telling Zhang, you know, to, you know, tell them to double the guards and so on. And thus, yeah, Zhang makes his way to the Chongrom prison. And and also, Ugwe uh, also informs Shifu that the time is about to come to, you know, discover who is going to be the dragon warrior. And sure enough, uh, the ceremony of who to be the dragon warrior happens and, you know, posing. At one point in the noodle shop scene, uh, you know, an advertisement banner for the Dragon Warrior event and telling everybody in the noodle shop to make their way to the Jade Palace. And yeah, of course, sure enough, Poe and his father making their way there. And <laughs> Mr. Ping, obviously, um, you know, they have a wagon. He has a wagon of noodles that they can sell at the event and making their way to the steps to the Jade Palace. And that's one thing for the character of Poe, you know, him having to deal with so much stares. Like, I'm sure if it wasn't, like, I have, a, I, I'm, I'm wondering, like, if he can handle not that many stares, you know, if he could handle stare, like, how many stares there would be in a house, maybe. But if it was a lot of stares, yeah, it's understandable, especially for Poe. So, of course, you know, he has to, you know, he has to walk all the way up to the Jade Palace with, you know, because of the steps. And right when he makes his way there, well, unfortunately, the doors close and he can't get in. And he's going to miss the, the whole event. And he's trying to find a way to get in there and try to see what's going on in the Jade Palace and with the Dragon Warrior event slash tournament happening. And the many attempts that he tries to get in, like trying to use trees and so on, and it all it, then the, the 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 dragon warrior tournament finally it comes up to Tigris, and he doesn't want to miss out on that. And then at one point he uses fireworks to get in there, and sure enough, his father finally shows up, and you know that's when Poe finally tells the truth to his father that he did not dream about noodles; he dreamt about kung fu, and you know. 
when he thinks that the fireworks are about to go off, you know, he says, I love Kung Fu! And it doesn't go off. And, you know, Mr. Ping telling his son, you know, let's get back to work and selling noodles. But then out of nowhere, you know, the fireworks go off and it sends him flying. And then he lands right smack down in the middle, right in front of the Furious Five and Master Ugwe. Master Ugwe was just about to announce and reveal who the next dragon warrior is. Like, who the dragon warrior is, I should say. I I'm not sure, like... I you know what? That's the thing, because I'm not... I don't think the franchise has ever established if there was a previous dragon warrior. You know what I'm saying? Like, if Ugwe was a dragon warrior once, like, I don't know. Because now that I'm thinking of it, I just thought I'd throw that out. And if you guys know anything about this, let me know in the comments section. But yeah, because after the fireworks went off, again, Poe lands smack down right in front of everybody. And then, because when he wakes up, like, he sees that Ugwe's pointing at him. And I think he was going to point at Tigris. But of course, he was, like, pointing at Poe. And he announces that Poe is the Dragon Warrior. And, you know, from Poe, the Furious Five, and Shifu, they... They don't think it's possible. They just, you know, they're, they're, they're all saying, what? And Mr. Ping, too. What? <laughs> and thus, Poe is taken inside to the Jade Palace. And, you know, Shifu believes that, you know, Poe being present there will not last long. And, you know, um, from Shifu and the Furious Five, especially Tigress, like, you know, waiting to see if at any point Poe will leave the Jade Palace because, you know, because again, at first they don't believe that, you know, he is the Dragon Warrior and it was a mistake and so on. And then we see Zhang, who was sent by Shifu to the uh, the Chorgam prison to inform um, you know, the guards, which, you know, they're all rhinos, to double the guards, you know, basically giving them um, what uh, Shifu requested for them to do. And one of the main guards, uh, Commander Vak Vakker, if I'm, I don't even know if I am saying the character's name right, being voiced by the late legendary actor Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah, because he voices the, the commander rhino of uh, the Chorgom prison. And, you know, he's, the, the commander's outraged by these requests from Shifu and thinking that it's some kind of joke. And, you know, he thinks that, you know, they are in safe hands with, you know, taking care of Tai Long from escaping. And then we see Tai Long. And, um, yeah, because he's in, he's in a lot of chains. Like, I, like, aside from, like, the chains on his, on his wrists, like, this thing that he has on his back, like, it's, like, resembles, like, a turtle shell with... I don't know exactly what it's for specifically. I mean, if you guys know, just, yeah. Um, and the commander just taunting Tai Long and telling him, you know, Hey, the dragon warrior's been announced. And stepping on his tail, oh, did I step on the little kitty's tail? <laughs> yeah, but boy, you'd be sorry for, you know, messing with uh, Tai Long. I mean, Tai Long is just sitting there and we don't even, like, see his face. His face is, like, pitch dark, you know? And there was one moment where, because how high they were up, uh, the commander Rhino, like, caused uh, Zhang to lose a feather. Like, a feather came off of him. And sure enough, when, after they, um, you know, leave uh, Tai Long, um, basically, yeah, we do see the feather come down right next to him, and that's when we Tai, La tai Lang's eyes open. Tai Long. Tai Lang, Tai Long. <laughs> um... And then we come back to the Jade Palace and, you know, Poe's first time being inside the Jade Palace and seeing all these artifacts. And he's just freaking out like a fanboy. And he even had accidentally broke one of them. And, you know, his first encounter with Shifu and Sh Shifu starting to give Poe a hard time, you know, thinking, you know, saying to him that, you know, you will never be the Dragon Warrior, you know, in order to be the Dragon Warrior and to get the scroll, you must learn the ways of Kung Fu and so on. And, and again, because Shifu doubting that Poo Po, Po, Po can do anything, you know, to be a Kung Fu fighter. And again, how the Furious Five feel as well, especially Tigress. 
Um, and then, like, yeah, the sequence where uh, Shifu takes Poe, you know, to start his training in the training room, obviously, with all the weapons and such, and we see the Furious Five, they, they could, they're easily handling all the weapons and so on, like the training stuff, you know, and for Poe, doesn't go too well. In fact, like, he first tries out that, um, you know, that inflatable, uh, whatever the, I forget the name of it specifically, but if you know what I'm talking about, yeah. And, you know, just trying, you know, trying to hit it, and he's taking his time, and Shifu's just telling him, you know, just hit it. And then afterwards, yeah, because he did hit it, but then it pounced him back and so on. And, of course, then he tries all the other practice weapons and so on, and it doesn't go too well for Poe, unfortunately. You know, just getting injured and wounded, but, you know, nothing really bad happening, especially since he's a fat panda. And uh, even, like, you know, there, there was that like, one training part where there's fire, flames, and, of course, he got burned. And when it came to the Furious Five making their way to their rooms and, you know, Poe just behind them, again, because climbing so much steps. Well, and, and for the Furious Five, as they're making, as they're making their way to uh, their rooms, like, yeah, they're saying uh, some unpleasant things about Poe. I mean, for some of them, they're not trying to, I don't think they're trying to really insult him. Like, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying. But, you know, it's definitely Shifu and Tigress that are really doubting on Poe. And, you know, when it came to Poe trying to find his room, and he at one point accidentally got into Crane's room, and it was a little bit awkward between Poe and Crane. And then uh, Tigress coming out and telling Poe that you don't belong in the Jade Palace, you're a disgrace to Kung Fu. But, you know, the thing is, like, they should know that, you know, Poe, he is a huge fan of them, and he loves and respects Kung Fu, but, you know, they just think that it, he doesn't have it in him, you know, that he's not doing Kung Fu the right way, you know what, you know what I'm saying, yeah. Um, and yeah, again, just Poe just being a fanboy, and, you know, when uh, Tigress went back in a room, because, you know, the last thing Poe says, like, you know, big fan... And then uh, there's a moment between Poe and Ugwe, and even Ugwe can see the fact that, you know, Poe eats when he's upset. And, you know, a nice moment between uh, Ugwe and Poe. And uh, throughout most of this film, Ugwe telling Poe and, you know, Shifu that, you know, there are no mistakes. Yeah, because, you know, uh, he did tell Shifu this earlier, and yeah, obviously he did say this to Poe, and um, a very wise word that uh, Ugwe says to Poe, tomorrow is yesterday, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. Like, such a good, wise, like, word slash quote, basically quote, yeah, from Master Ugwe, you know, Definitely Ugwe being one of those characters, you know, just so, just great characters and so wise. Like, you know, good examples. Yoda from Star Wars, Rafiki from The Lion King. You, ex you exactly get my point, <laughs> you know, and it's true. And then we come back to the Chorgom prison where Tai Long makes his escape by, for, by using the feather and once he starts to, you know, break from the chains and so on, and all the rhino guards, like, unleashing their weapons to stop Chai, tai Long, yeah. Um, yeah, basically, all hell breaks loose in uh, uh, Chongrom, Chongrom Prison. Yeah. And, yeah, because Tai Long just easily taking down the rhino guards, and the commander rhino just, you know thinking that, you know, they can still stop him and so on. And there was a moment where we did hear the Wilhelm scream. It was funny. And when a Tai Long came face to face with all the other rhinos and the commander ordering to fire up in the air to basically fire at uh, some rocks, you know, that come down on him. Well, Tai Long still survives from that. And, you know, he actually, he, he also like um, up top of the the ceiling, 
there were these uh, dynamite sticks, and he, obviously, yeah, uh, Tai Wong took them, and that's, yeah, the commander now realizes that, yep, they should have gone with what Shifu said, and Zhang just asking the commander, you know, can we, like, panic or leave and so on, and, you know, the commander's like, yes, <laughs> that whimpery voice, and yeah, an explosion happens, and uh, Tai Long being voiced by another legendary actor, Ian McShane. And he and Ian McShane previously did another DreamWorks animated movie, which being Shrek the Third, he was the voice of Captain Hook. Yeah, it was him. So yeah, he's the voice of Tai Long, and good for him, like, voicing a previous villain and, you know, doing another villain, and in fact, the main villain of a DreamWorks animated film, even though the villains in... Uh, in Shrek the Third, aside from Prince Charming, you know, they are redeemed, and they're not all that bad, you know. And thanks to Arthur's, you know, words of advice and, and so on that he gave to the villains, yeah. So again, E. McShane voicing Tai Long, and Tai Long gives Zhang a message to, you know, tell Shifu that, you know, tell Shifu that the Rio Dragon Warrior is coming home because he has him by the neck and just, like, stroking him. At least, you know, he's kind to Zhang and spares him, and obviously, you know, he has to, you know, deliver and inform uh, Sh uh, Shifu, deliver the message, that is. Yeah. And so the next morning, um, well, because uh, the gong rings and, you know, it doesn't take too long for the Furious Five to get out of bed and, you know, greet their master. Good morning, master. <laughs> you know, they're quick. I mean, you know, they are well-trained kung fu warriors and, you know, hence they're the Furious Five. Um, Panda, they think that Panda is still asleep. I mean, knowing Panda, Poe that is, and they call him Panda, um... I mean, sure, I, I would assume that, yeah, he would probably get up a bit late, but no, they because he's not in his room, and they think that he left, but actually, no, he got a warm start, and, well, actually, you know, like, that's that's nice to see that he he actually did something like that. Like, Shifu should be impressed by that. W why isn't he? Because he got up very early to warm up and so on, and he's trying, and he's trying to split and so on, but no luck. And even when, like, you know, uh, Shifu, like, sh like has Tigress, like, show off the skills and it takes more and so on. And, you know, Tigress does a split and, like, what she broke and such with her feet and, like, it crumbles. And he picks up a piece, like, he's just blown away by what he saw. And, like, he picks up a piece and, you know, Shifu telling him, put that down. The only souvenir we keep is broken knuckles, etc. <laughs> yeah. And thus, more training for Poe happens as each of the Furious Five members train with Poe. And it was very nice that uh, Viper, because I, I can tell, like, for the for Viper, she's a very kind and sweet snake. And, you know, she she's apologetic to Poe because, you know, like, she said to him, you know, I'm sorry, I thought you were ready. But, you know, Poe's fine. He thought it was awesome. And then we see him training with Monkey and so on. And then it all leads down to Shifu. And just instantly, Shifu just easily takes care of Poe, just, like, spinning him around and such, and causing him to tumble on the long, you know, list of stairs, you know, endless stairway, you know, leading to the training, uh, section, you know, the, you know, the building, the, the, the training building, I guess you could say, because, golly, everything that's connected to the Jade Palace, they have a lot of stairs, like, that's a fact, like, you could tell, and because he's still going down the stairs, and the Furious Five can hear him still going down, and Tigris, you know, still being harsh on Poe, you know, saying, you know, if he, it, like, you know, he, he may not return, like, however she said it, you know, like, if he chooses to quit, he won't come back up the stairs and so on, however she put it. And then later that evening, we see uh, Viper and Mantis um, uh, treating Poe with medical care, like, you know, putting needles on him. Of course, you know, we all know how needles feel, <laughs> and uh, it's disrupting uh, Monkey and Crane. And Crane was, like, trying to draw a picture or something writing, but, you know, because of how loud Poe is, it caused him to slip, and yeah. And Poe then uh, tells Mantis and Viper that he was is starting to indicate that, you know, them and Shifu were trying to get rid of him and so on, and, you know, 
a very, you know, awkward position for Viper and Mantis, you know. And then at one point, uh, you know, Mantis and Viper start to, they start to tell him about, you know, that Shifu, he used to smile, and the fact that, you know, they were going to bring up Tai Lung, and yeah, Tigress, of course, hears this, and she gives Poe the entire backstory and origin of Tai Lung, and, you know, when Tai Lung used to be um, Shifu's apprentice and so on, and basically, yeah, because Shifu discovered uh, Tai Lung when he was a cub, like, he was left uh, by, like, the Jade Palace doors, like, you know, I mean, obviously, Tai Long's parents, like, probably gave up on him and so on. Like, there's a good example right there on Tai Long. And, yeah, Shifu took in Tai Long by raising him and adopting him as his own son. And sure enough, he starts to train young Tai Long the ways of Kung Fu. And, of course, yeah, it doesn't take too long for Tai Long to be a really good Kung Fu fighter. And Tai Long wanted the Dragon Scroll, but Ugwe saw darkness in Tai Long's heart and he refused, and thus outraged, poor, throughout um, Chinatown and so on, you know, with the Jade Palace and all the people, the villagers. He's just uh, attacking and, you know, his rage and so on, and he tried to get this, the Dragon Scroll. Shifu uh, tried to stop him, but how could he? Because, you know, Tai Long was a son to him. How can he destroy what he raised? And, of course, yeah, uh, Tai Long, not, you know... He, he knocks uh, Shifu out of the way and so on. And Ugwe with his powerful Kung Fu stuff and so on, like like doing his fingers, like I forget the name of it that he does, but yeah, he basically, boom, knocks Tai Long out. And yeah, it basically distraught uh, Shifu and, you know, he just, his personality changed. And even when we see a young tigress, like, yeah, Shifu, just not himself, as he as he used to be, very happy and, you know, and smiling and so on. Just, you know, very, a very depressed, you know, uh, kung fu master. And, um, yeah, because, and then Tigress saying something else to Poe of him being, you know, a fat and lazy panda. Um, and pa Poe at one point just going, Wee! and Tigress going, oh, that's it. And uh, Mantis, you know, wait, 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 my fault. I accidentally uh, did his um, uh, facial nerve, you know, by putting a needle right at his facial nerve. And we see all the needles on his back. That's a lot of needles. And Mantis then saying, and I might have stopped his heart. <laughs> well, you know, just quickly get the needles off of him and before he dies. But of course, yeah, Poe is, is fine. And after that, we then come to Ugwe and Shifu at uh, the same location that, you know, where Poe was and Ugwe showing up because they were at a peach tree. And once again, like, Shifu, like, he tells Ugwe that, you know, he still thinks that, he, he says to Ugwe that he still thinks that it's a mistake, you know, of Poe being there. Like, he was, like, he's he's been going on saying that, you know, he was never supposed to be the Dragon Warrior and to be there and so on. And once again, Ugwe telling him, you know, there are no accidents and so on. And of course, yeah, Shifu does, does know that he told him that. And they go on talking about, like, the peach tree and, you know, Shifu growing a, putting a seed in the dirt and so on. And of course, Ugwe giving some very wiseful words to him and advice. Yeah. And, you know, Ugwe telling Shifu that, you know, he wants him to believe. And a very sad moment because the peach tree starts to bloom. Like, yeah, and, like, it, Ugwe's time has come. And he passes the stick that he, that he was holding to Shifu and telling him, You must continue without me. And, you know, and the last words he says to him is, you know, you must believe, and, yep, Ugwe vanishes, like, I, I guess you'd say, like, he, you know, peacefully passes away, I want to say, yeah, and, um, I don't know, I mean, just saying, like, maybe something, because a bit similar to how, you know, with Yoda in Return of the Jedi, I don't know, just something like that, because it popped in my head, I'm just saying, and again, like, yeah, I mean, a very emotional moment for, Ugu, you know, for Ugwe, you know, vanishing and golly, beautiful music that's playing. And that's another thing, because the music in Kung Fu Panda and the in the franchise that is, 
It is so beautiful. Again, everything about this movie is beautiful. And of course, I'm going to continue saying that. And after that, uh, we then uh, come back to Poe and the Furious Five, um, you know, and Poe fixing them dinner and fixing uh, his noodles. Like, yeah, like, he, he, of course, has his father's recipe. Well, not really, but, you know, Poe can cook some pretty good noodles according to how the Furious Five, like, how they reacted to how good the noodles that he fixed, how they, how good they taste. And he finally gets appreciated for something because, yeah, Poe is a good cook. And <laughs> it's funny because, like, Viper was telling Tigress that you have to try this, and yeah, Tigress doesn't try the noodles yet, you know, because knowing Tigress at first. Um, and then they start to have some fun, because, like, when Poe, like, you know, drinks from the bowl and, like, a piece of noodle, like, dangles from the top of his mouth, and, like, you know, they start laughing and, you know, Mantis saying, oh, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, Master Shifu, like, it looks like Shifu, and he starts to imitate Shifu, you know, you will never be the dragon warrior, you must grow big and strong, and one day you'll get ears like me. <laughs> And then, obviously, like, uh, it was coming, yeah, because Shifu's stepping in, and after what just happened with Shifu, and, yeah, because, that's another thing, because early on, I almost forgot to mention this, yeah, uh, Zhang uh, the Goose, he, because, yeah, he did finally come back and informed Shifu about Tai Long returning, then Tai Long, then, sorry, Shifu, then told Ugwe, and then Shifu told Poe and the Furious Five, and that Ugwe is no longer with them, and hence, you know, showing the stick. And yeah, because it's up to Po now to take on Tai Lung. But yeah, that's when finally Po starts to run away. And I did love that moment between Po and Shifu, because yeah, I mean, you know, Po telling Sh uh, Shifu that, you know, you've been trying to get rid of me, and Shifu, you know, saying, yes, I was trying to get rid of you. But you, but yet you stayed. And Poe going on saying that, you know, I, you know, like, he, 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 of course, he, of course, knew and told him that, you know, the, the things that he and the other Furious Five members were saying to him, you know, being fat and so on, you know, Poe goes on saying it hurt, but it could never hurt then every day in his life being him. And he, then he goes on saying he stayed because, you know, he felt that if anybody could change him, not being him, it would be him, Shifu. And, you know, Shifu saying, but I can change you. I can make you the dragon warrior and so on. And, you know, Po, you know, going on saying, come on, Tai Long's on his way. And if it takes him a hundred years to get here, how are you going to change this into the dragon warrior? Huh? And then, like a little bit of a pause, like, you know, how? How? And, you know, how? And Shifu's then saying, I don't know. I don't know. And then post, you know, all he could say is, that's what I thought. Yeah, that that is such a good moment right there, don't you think? And for a character like Poe, because he can be serious when, you know, he needs to be serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, those type of characters, when they do have their moments. You know, any character that's funny and so on, they can have their moments. So, yeah. And, yeah, Tigress did overhear this. Uh, she was up top somewhere, part of the Jade Palace. And that's when she goes off to, well, it's obvious, take on Tai Lung. And all the other Furious Five members, you know, tag along with her. And she's telling them, you know, not to stop her. And Viper assuring her that they're not trying to stop her. They're going to join her. All of the Furious Five members going after and taking on Tai Lung. Yeah. And then... We then come back to more with Poe and Shifu, and this is where Shifu starts to really appreciate and realize that there's something in Poe after all, because he like he notices that Poe like has been climbing and trying to get food and such, and yeah, Poe telling Shifu that when he's upset he eats, um, and he tr Shifu tricked Poe into you know mentioning something about what monkey eats and the the like. A, a top, a, 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 the top shelves where it is, and yeah, he tricked them and made made Poe climb up there and get it. And yeah, that's where Shifu does start to smile, and he's very impressed on what Poe is doing. And that's when uh, Shifu takes Poe. You know, obviously, there's more walking. You know, high places and so on. You know, poor Poe. 
And um, that's when uh, they come to um, a location that's called a uh, Pool of Sacred Tears. And according to Shifu, uh, this is where Ugwe unraveled the mysteries of harmony and focus. This is the birthplace of Kung Fu. Yeah, so, yeah, pretty cool. In fact, right before Shifu told him where they were and what this place was with this, you know, pool of water, like, Po was, like, cooling him off with the water, and, oh my gosh, you know. I mean, Po didn't know at first, and right when Shifu was about to tell him. And we get a montage of Shifu training Po some more, and, you know, it's looking good for Po. Uh, you know, the training is looking good for Po, like, he's doing much better now. And then it all comes down to uh, Po about to eat some dumplings, and it's another, it's another thing part of Po's training, like, you know, you can eat now, but, you know, Shifu still gets, like, like, snatches the dumplings and eats them, and fighting over the last dumpling, and finally Po does win, but he gives the dumpling to Shifu and basically telling him, I'm not hungry anymore. Like, that's, that was a good thing for Po, because if you, if you think about it and if you realize, yeah... So yeah, Poe's training has, I think, yeah, been complete, and now he, he has it in him. He's now officially good at Kung Fu, and both bowing to each other, and then we come back to the Furious Five taking on Tai Lung, and this was a great moment to finally see the Furious Five in action and their attempt to defeat and take on Tai Lung, and I think it's obvious what was to come for their battle. And, uh, the, like, a little a a little interaction between Tai Lung and Tigress, like, you know, Tai Lung asking, where's the dragon warrior? And Tigress saying, w you know, how, like, how do you know you're not looking at her? And Tai Lung just laughing and going, you know, you think I'm a fool? I know you're not the dragon warrior. And Tai Lung is aware of what happened at the event that happened at the Jade Palace and where Poe, you know, he fell from the sky because of the fireworks, and that's when Monkey said Poe's name, and Tai Lung now knows his name, you know. So that's his name, Poe. Finally, a worthy opponent. Our battle will be legendary! And yeah, because then, like, yeah, the fighting continues between the Furious Five and Tai Lung, and yeah, I mean, the, the Furious Five are doing pretty good, you know, kicking Tai Lung's butt, but yeah, they just don't have an in- they just- don't have it in them, you know, defeating Tai Lung, because you think at first that they did defeat him, and, you know, the bridge was broken, and so on, and because at one point he was tied up, Tai Lung, and it seemed like he was defeated, but nope, uh, Tai Lung was not defeated right there and then, because, you know, he got out of being tied up, and thus, you know, he, of course, once again came face to face with the Furious Five, and, you know, saying, Shifu taught you well, and he first strikes Monkey, like, knocks him out cold, and then, right before he takes care of the others, you know, Tai Lung saying, but he didn't teach you all, you know, however, however he says it. And, yeah, because the, the kung fu powers that Tai Lung has, that, like, the, Fur the Furious Five... They are no match for Tai Lung. Even, of course, yeah, Crane establishes that because when they finally return home to the Jade Palace, and yeah, because at that point, Shifu and Po finally returned after all the training that Po, that po had to do um, because what happened was um, Tai Lung has the uh, nerve attack and basically, like, knocking them out them out cold and, like, they're frozen still and so on. And, of course, yeah, Shifu uh, attending to, you know, unfreezing them, just, like, moving his hands around, like, and moving their, their bodies around, like, yeah, and, of course, they wake up from it and so on, like, no no longer frozen still. <laughs> it was pretty funny because when Shifu went, went to aid Monkey and <laughs> Monkey accidentally punched Poe, and you do hear Monkey saying, sorry, Poe, like, that was nice to hear. That was nice for Monkey to say that. And then it all comes down to Poe receiving the Dragon Scroll and... It seems as though at this point that Poe is to be 
the dragon warrior. And thus, uh, Shifu gets the dragon scroll from up top of the ceiling, inside of, like, it was being placed in, like, a, a statue dragon's mouth and so on. And, you know, at, at, and at one point, because Poe, he's, he's having a hard time trying to open it, but, yeah, Shifu easily takes it off. You know, you hear a... So, and, you know, just Poe nervously just opening it, and when he sees it, it's glowing, and he starts to panic, and basically... It's blank, and even Shifu can't understand it. Like, he is forbidden at first to look at it, but he, he has to look at it. He has no choice but to look at it. And yeah, it's blank, and he's confused by this. So is Poe. Like, what? why is it blank? But there's something about it being blank that Poe discovers a little bit later, and until I get to that. And because Tai Lung, he is on his way... Well, Shifu tells Poe and the Furious Five to evacuate the village, you know, for the villagers' protection and so on, and he will face Tai Long on his own, because, you know, Shifu says he must pay his mistakes and so on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, because Shifu shouldn't really blame himself on this, because, I mean... Obviously, when Shifu discovered Tai Long, raised him, and, you know, being his own son, and trained him the ways of Kung Fu, well, he didn't see this coming. Like, who wouldn't? Um, but, you know, for someone like Ugwe, being very smart and wise, obviously he found this out and sensed it, because when Tai Long got older and wanted the Dragon Scroll, yeah, understandable. And thus, uh, everybody being evacuated from the village, and Poe and his father being reunited, and it's back to it's back to for Poe doing noodle business and so on, and a very nice moment between Poe and Mister Ping, and you know Poe showing his feelings over to his father and such, you know about kung fu and so on, and at one point, Mister Ping, Poe's father. Um, tells him that, you know, he wanted to tell him for a long time about the secret ingredient to his noodles. And he finally tells him by saying to him, the secret ingredient to my, to my noodles is nothing. Apparently there is no secret ingredient to his noodles. And that's when Poe realizes because the dragon scroll is blank, there is no secret ingredient for the dragon scroll. Because it's you! It's you that you look at in the Dragon Scroll. Because, yeah, Poe was looking at his refre reflection in the Dragon Scroll. You, you get it? Like, wow. And then, yeah, because Poe then heads back to the Jade Palace to take on Tai Long. And, yeah, Tai Long did finally return. And, of course, we do get a fighting moment between, you know, Shifu and Tai Long. And Shifu is failing at trying to take on Tai Long, his adoptive son, and there is a moment where, you know, Shifu apologizes for everything, and I think, yeah, there's, like, a bit of, like, an, a, like, bit of, like, an emotional face or something in Tai Long's face, but basically Tai Long didn't want an apology for Shifu. All he wanted was the Dragon Scroll, and, well, and besides, like, you know, Tai Long just, you know, saying to him, you know, who was it that, you know, put that stuff in my head with the Kung Fu and stuff like that? Yeah. And, yeah, of course, he sees that the Dragon Scroll is gone. Well, because Poe has it. And that's when Poe finally comes face to face with Tai Lung. And thus, their battle begins. And, you know, because, like, like Poe with the scroll, like, you know, come and get it. And, you know, <laughs> It's, it's funny, because, you know, even, like, when something serious is happening, like, Kung Fu fighting, Poe can still have his funny moments. And again, the battle for Poe and Tai Long begins, and, you know, throughout uh, most of uh, the China village, and, uh, you know, it's easy for Poe to take on Tai Long because of his, you know... Uh, weight, weight, and so on, and, you know, Tai Long trying to punch him, but, you know, still, because Tai Long just bouncing, you know, from, like, punching Poe and so on, and trying to get the dragon scroll, it was pretty funny, and even, like, you know, at one point, because, like, I mean, yeah, because, uh, Tai Long did get his hands on the dragon scroll, but, yeah, it's blank, and, you know, he doesn't understand it, and, yeah, Poe telling him that he didn't get it at first, but then he did figure it out because, again, there is no secret ingredient 
for the Dragon Scroll. It's just you. And Tai Long, that's not what he wanted to hear, and he's just completely outraged, and he does the nerve attack on Poe, but it has no effect on Poe. It's, it's tickling him. Like, he can't take it. And, of course, again, it's easy for Poe to, you know, take on... Uh, tai Long wounding him and so on. Even at one point, he made Tai Long bite his own tail, and you hear like a kitten sound. <laughs> it's funny. And um, he made Tai Long, like, you know, by using his belly, bouncing him into the air. And like, you don't see him for a few seconds, and then he comes back, and Poe steps out of the way, and he smacked down the ground, just like in a cartoon, and since it is a cartoon. And yeah, Tai Long at this point is very wounded, and like, you can't defeat me, dragon warrior. And sure enough, Poe grabs him by the fingers and with the pinky, and it's the whoosh uh, uh, power, the whooshy finger power and so on. And that, yeah, because at the beginning of the film, I almost forgot to mention, because, yeah, the first encounter for Shifu and Poe, yeah, Shifu had him by, yeah, the fingers and doing the pinky, and yeah, Poe knew that, maneuver too. And for Poe doing that as well, and Tai Long, you know, saying, you know, that's impossible. Shifu didn't teach you that. And Poe, in response, saying, nope, I figured it out on my own. And he did. And thus, you know, putting his pinky down and, you know, saying skadoosh and boom, that it, it's very powerful. And there's a huge blast wave. And, you know, the Furious Five and the villagers, because they were making their way out of the village. Well, it, you know, the 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 blast wave, yeah, makes their way to them. And, yep, Tai Long is defeated once and for all. And when the Furious Five and the villagers return, um, yeah, because the aftermath of the blast wave from the Wuxi Finger move, uh, maneuver and so on, uh, yeah, it's all dusty and so on, and they see Poe making his way, and yeah, because he is now the Dragon Warrior, and you think at first he's got the Dragon Warrior gear on, the hat and the cape, but no, it's just like a pan and like a ape apron that he has, a little apron, it's funny, and of course everybody cheers, and you know, everybody now loves the Dragon, the new Dragon Warrior, um, Poe's daddy is now happy, a happy, a happy and proud father, and the Furious Five, they now bow to him, and especially Tigress, because Tigress has, you know, new respect for Poe, and, you know, calling him master, and, you know, Poe, you know, uh, tickled by it, like, you know, Master, and, like, then, th it then hits him, like, Master, be Master Shifu, and then he runs to Master Shifu's aid, because, yeah, Tai Long did really, like, was really taking, uh, Shifu down, and almost, like, killing him by the throat, and how badly wounded he was, like, his fur being messed up, but when we come back to Shifu, he's still laying on the floor, I mean, he looks better now, no longer, like, he no longer looks injured, and so on, and Poe telling him that Tai Long has been defeated, and Shifu now, you know, he now appreciates Poe more, and, you know, realizing that he is now officially the Dragon Warrior, and Ugwe was never wrong from the beginning. And, yeah, because what, Ug what Ugwe saw and sensed in Poe, yeah, you know, could not underestimate someone like Ugwe. And... Yeah, Shifu saying, thank you, and <laughs> you think that, even to Poe, like, you think that he's dying, but, you know, even Poe, like, saying, no, Master Shifu, please, don't die, and Shifu saying, I'm not dying, you idiot, I, I mean, Dragon Warrior, I'm finally at peace, like, now he can have the peace that he needs, and especially since, like, you know, early on, he was, you know, doing inner peace, inner, inner peace inner peace, and now he finally has it, and Poe joins Shifu, you know, and them just laying there, and Poe, I think, like, like, it's like, I don't know, because, like, I think he's getting bored already of this, like, are we gonna do anything, and then he says to uh, Shifu, you want to get something to eat, and, you know, Shifu then says, sure, like, yeah, yeah, he's up to eating, so... And boom, like, that's how the movie ends. The end. And a nice uh, song cover of Everybody is Kung Fu Fighting, sung by uh, CeeLo Green and Jack Black also joining in, like, doing some of the chorus, like, you know, going, Kung Fu Fighting, Living Fright. I mean, it's a really good song cover of Everybody's Kung Fu Fighting. Very catchy. Like, sometimes when I hear the song, in fact, when I gave this 
uh, another watch, the movie itself, like, I just couldn't help but just get into the beat and so on. How could you? Because, again, this is a pretty good song song cover of Kung Fu Fighting, again, sung by CeeLo Green and Jack Black uh, joining in as well. And uh, the end credits were pretty cool, especially, like, the, the, the like 2D animation to it and stuff like that. And uh, <laughs> especially two that I can think of where, like, the needles, like, there's a lot of them on Viper. And uh, Shifu was laughing at Tigress because Tigress has a noodle, you know, all, you know, on top of her mouth. And, like, it looks like Shifu. And, you know, Shifu finds that funny. So, and Tigress still having that, that serious face and doing that. Yeah, it's pretty funny. And there is an end credit scene, if anybody didn't even know this. And yeah, in the end credit scene, we do see Poe and Shifu e eating dumplings. And Poe asks for a lot of dumplings, and Shifu gives them all the dumplings. Hey, a call back to, you know, what happened with them and, you know, when it came to, you know... Poe trying to eat the dumplings. And yeah, they're, they are at the peach tree, and we do see, because uh, when uh, Shifu planted that uh, peach seed in the ground, it's starting to grow, and, you know, very soon it will grow to be a, a, another peach tree, and that was a nice way to end the film right there. Kung Fu Panda, the first one. Just, again, such a fantastic animated feature from DreamWorks themselves. The story is fantastic. The animation, the music, just everything about it. And, you know, the whole franchise, the whole Kung Fu Panda franchise, just beautiful. And the characters are entertaining. And the first film doesn't disappoint, delivering some funny moments and emotional moments. Just the first one, fantastic. And I'm giving the first Kung Fu Panda film 10 out of 10 stars. Yes, 10 out of 10 stars for the first Kung Fu Panda film. And what about you guys? What did you think of the first Kung Fu Panda film? Like, did, did any of you see this when it came out in theaters? And is it in your top favorite DreamWorks animated features? And what did you think of my review? Leave comments and give this review video a like, as always. So, with all that being said... Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my review of the first Kung Fu Panda film. More review videos are on the way. They're going to be awesome. Keep looking forward, and I'll see you guys in the next video slash review. Take care, and peace out. Skadoosh!